Hello and welcome to my home. Happy holidays from Desert Mountain Apothecary. If you've ever wondered what it's like to decorate a mid-century modern home in the desert for the holidays, today's your lucky day. So come and decorate along with me while I put the finishing touches on our holiday decorations. So here we have the main event, which is the Christmas tree. So this year we have a seven foot Fraser fir. And um, Fraser firs are great because they have very little needle drop and they seem to retain more of the moisture and the um, resin of the tree for a lot longer. So uh, we like to keep it up a little bit after Christmas, at least until after New Year's if possible. But it, it is tough in the desert. I mean, it's already so dry and then you put on the um, forced air heating and it's bone dry. So we close the vent to the living room and you know, if it's a little chilly, we'll put it on the fireplace, but it's just for that time that we're using the fireplace, that 20, 30 minutes, not, you know, all day or all night long drying out the tree. So you have to spend, you know, extra attention to keep it watered, <laughs> which is something I have to remind myself because we really want it to make it for the long haul. So in terms of what's on here, I mean, we don't really have anything fancy or expensive, but I really love the overall look and um, the inspiration for this tree was um, visiting the uh, inn at Rancho Santa Fe in Rancho Santa Fe um, in San Diego, North County. So one thing I really love about Rancho Santa Fe is that it's an equestrian community. Almost all, not all, but almost all the homes are equestrian ranches as well as residences. So there are horse trails along the roads and people ride their horses into the main little town square to go to brunch or whatever. So um, it has a very, very luxurious aesthetic, but also rustic and, um, and also somewhat historical for California, that is. Um, so here we have, this is actually, these are actually my favorite components of the whole tree, which are the um, pine cones. Now, I don't even remember where we got them anymore because it's been so many years and they've been spray painted so many different colors, but we've kind of kept it at these basic colors for the moment. And um, we have some little ribbons, some fake flowers, and um, this was something we saw in Rancho Santa Fe that we reproduced that we thought was so pretty was the, the artificial flowers on the tree. And um, she's gone away now, but we have a little kitten, a little one-eyed blind kitten that loves to get into mischief. So unfortunately, we don't have any of my beautiful crystal snowflakes and icicles because if the tree went, then we'd have shards of glass everywhere. So we have a wire to the ceiling. That'll help it from knocking over. But if it does knock up, tip over, it's not, it's really not the end of the world. Nothing on here is breakable. Nothing on here is expensive. We have these little metal pieces, little drips and drabs. Nothing's gonna happen to them if that, if that knocks over. So, you know, one year we really had the most elegant tree. It was a tabletop Christmas tree covered in crystal and glass. And if so, <laughs> we cannot have that anymore with the kitten. I think she'll be a kitten for many years. And um, it's a good trade-off. I'd much rather have the kitten because she, she's, uh, she's like our little holiday joy all year long. And um, she's a special gift for Christmas. She's had a lot of developmental delays. So she'll be a kitten for, so she, although she's caught up almost completely, I think she will be that really um, rambunctious kitten for a little while longer. <laughs> so let's see, what else is interesting to point out about this? Oh, these are fun. These are um, bohemian or otherwise known as Czech glass crystal orbs that are faceted. So these are really beautiful and I don't use a lot of them on the tree. I just use the one up there because once again, <laughs> for the same reason. So let's get into it. All right, so our task for right now is to take all of these little LED candles off. Now, these are great. They're not expensive. Each one takes one AA battery and the clip stays on the tree with a little swivel so you can prevent like, you know, all the drooping. So what's great, also great about these is that they have a remote control. So that's a lifesaver. So let's see, we've got our batteries, we've got our candles. We'll be enjoying this this evening.
All right. Now let's just give this an old test. Ah, there we go. Slow flicker, fast flicker. All right. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. are green to match the tree so it's probably a good idea to remember where you took your candles <laughs> oh here we go well I all I put this year well last year as well I put one ribbon in front of each holder to kind of disguise it but there's a secondary benefit to that in that it also helps me find it now this tree is very very beautiful but it doesn't have a lot of strong branches. So, um, you know, the way we have our trees here in the States, if you're watching from abroad, they grow them very, very bushy with weak branches and keep trimming, keep trimming, and that makes, whoops, and that makes, um, you know, a lot of weak branches and full, which is great. I mean, my, I guess, my preference is for a more European style tree with more of the openings. But in the States, that's a really niche kind of product. And um, there's a Christmas tree art by our home here that sells those kinds of trees for hundreds up to thousands of dollars. And I mean, they're so beautiful, but they're sitting out there baking in the desert sun every day. How fresh are they gonna be when you come home? I mean, we bought this at a big home improvement store and um, okay, it's not some special artisanal tree, but they deliver every week and they keep them shaded we are in the desert. I mean, it's 70 something degrees and sunny outside. If I wanted to go in the pool right now, I could. So you do really need to take that into account with your tree. It would make a lot more sense to have a artificial tree out here. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, it drying out and disposing of it. But I learned recently that it would take, um, you have, you would have to use that artificial tree for 20 years to justify the um, impact on the environment. Whereas these trees are farmed for purpose, they, although it seems very wasteful to have a new one every year, and in a lot of ways certainly it is, um, it is less harmful to the environment than an artificial tree. And I mean, let's be honest, most people don't keep an artificial tree for 20 years because it's just human nature to want to do other things. Like for me, I go back and forth between having a tabletop tree and a big tree because I love tabletop trees. I think one year I want to do a whole bunch of different tabletop trees. Maybe when the kitten is a little older and calmer, we'll attempt that, uh, but I'm not holding my breath. Okay. Oops, so you know, these branches are weak, but that's okay. Just gotta go a little farther back. Nope. Oop. Good. Now I did try having the, the lights on when the camera was rolling and um, that looks real. I don't know what it is about the LED lights. Someone would have to explain that to me. But they have to have a strobe effect when they're on video, and I don't want to give anyone a seizure, much less myself. So I'll I'll put up a picture, a still picture later. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate because it's so beautiful, but it it really looks strange on camera. I had the same problem when I went to the La Quinta Resort with my video camera. They have a 40 foot, if not taller, tree um, in their courtyard of the resort, like where the 
where the whole, it's like, it's an old adobe kind of, it's almost built like a, an old mission. So it has a big central courtyard where the cars come in and there's restaurants and outdoor seating and every, everything. So when I took my photos of the big tree, thinking that it would be so beautiful, it actually looked like some sort of deranged rave with the, with the tree flickering on and off. So that, that didn't seem very nice for YouTube. I didn't think anyone would appreciate that. Okay, we'll definitely have to do some moving around because like I say, the branches are quite weak. And um, it will be, it'll be fine. There we go. Hmm. That's a stronger branch. You know, the tree for me is always a work in progress. I don't. I don't see fit to having it exactly the same all the time because you always notice, you know, something's a little sparse there, the ornaments are a little crowded there. Um, last year we had a navy blue theme, which I thought was very beautiful, but it was a little bit boring and monotone, you know, monocolor. So we did, we're on the fence about adding another color. Our first Christmas in the desert, we had um, more of a tropical theme, which was really, really fun. And um, it was so cute. And ever since then, I always wanted to do a more traditional Christmas, you know, like back home, but it was never as cute. And I think that's a really good lesson for people that are living in a warm, sunny climate who are originally from you know, a place with a real winter is don't try to recreate exactly your, um, what you did back at home. Take elements of what you did back at home, put out your family heirlooms and everything, but whatever new place, new climate, new way of living you're going to, um, incorporate that into the decorations and whatever you do because it makes it all the more special because Every Christmas is the same but slightly different, and if you're in a different place, say you're having Christmas in the Caribbean, Christmas in the desert, um, you're going to the Southern Hemisphere for Christmas, you will probably want to go to the beach on Christmas, have a barbecue, lay up by the pool. It's going to be different and amazing in its own way, so celebrate that. It doesn't just have to be red and green, you know. Okay, you know, I'm a pretty monotone person. You can see what I'm wearing. It's pretty, you know, pretty basic, blue, blue, blue. But, you know, my partner is much more colorful and bright and tropical. And so we might put a whole other layer of colored ornaments on to really brighten it up. Because if, if maybe I'll swivel the camera around, you can see the flowers are blooming, the grass is green, the pool is sparkling, the sky is blue. It's a beautiful day in the desert. <laughs> it's, hardly, um, it's hardly a winter wonderland out there. But you know the old saying, I watched a uh, I Love Lucy episode where they went to Palm Springs for the first time and, and they said that Palm Springs is where the sunshine goes for the winter. And I thought that was so cute. That must have been an old tagline from the 50s for the valley. Now these candles are sort of attempting to mimic a kind of Scandinavian type of decoration where they have candles on the tree and they're much more, um, they're, they're much more, uh, I guess you'd say like a risk tolerant with their candles. They, you know, there's the Danish tradition of Huga having candles everywhere, candles on the tree, and then they have the, the feast or the celebration of Santa Lucia with the candles on the crown. Um, you know, I am very afraid of my home burning down, so these are perfect for me. And um, they're hopeful, they're very unlikely to burn the house down compared to candles on the tree, but they have a similar effect. And, um, you know, 
our Christmas, I, I think a lot of, it's interesting in, in the States and um, also in no, most Northern Europe and the UK, a lot of our Christmas traditions really stem from Scandinavian and German traditions. The tree is a German tradition, a lot of the carols, uh, you know, and um, so I think it's interesting that really we have this kind of mishmash tradition in this in this country um, where where you have sort of the biblical kind of um, aspect of the holiday with like the crash that's very that's very biblical and it's interesting because I wonder you know what was the weather like in um, the Middle East when Jesus was born was it like here in the desert were there palm trees you know it's, it's an interesting question, like maybe we here in the desert are in a similar climate to when the first Christmas happened, because it's still cold here in the desert, but it's hardly, you know, the winter wonderland <laughs> that, that a person thinks of with Christmas. That's good. You on the you on the other side. Can you please help me when I? Oh no! Did you stop? Okay. There we go. Not sure how long I have on the video. See what I can do stretching my camera and my memory card to the limit a little bit. <laughs> it's worth it if it takes a couple minutes. Okay, that I already have. Now, this is why I love the remote control. I don't have to go putting each and every one on. I can see which one has a battery. These are these are such a good buy. I haven't lost any through the years. I think this is the third year that I have this. And um, any of the Christmas decorations that cost money, by and large, I bought either in the summer online or in the after Christmas sales because it's just simple price arbitrage. You can get what you want at a fraction of the price and just put it away. And then there it is when you want it, in, you know, in the, in the coming season. So, you're not going to do better than getting exactly what you want for almost nothing. Except free, I guess. Now, if you're wondering why there's the big empty spot above the mirror, above the fireplace, we have painted one of our old mirrors white. So my new accent color for the house this year is white. And I just love it as a palette refresher. And something about white is um, that typically it works best when you have when you're in a very sunny, bright climate. Because something you'll notice um, farther north is that when you have white walls, um, when the room isn't bright, it can have a very 
um, gray and kind of cold and depressing aspect to it. Whereas you can see, you know, this room has plenty of, plenty of light, plenty of sunlight, even though it's not indirect light right now. And um, the white walls look beautiful, the bricks look beautiful and white. So we painted the mirror white, so it just kind of disappears into the white wall. But then in the evening, we'll catch the light with a tree or candles or the fireplace. So hopefully that will be a beautiful thing. And then that'll be the last aspect of my Christmas decorations because it'll have a beautiful garland around the top that'll really finish it off. <clears throat> Oops. don't want to go back on as much as they used to. I'm not sure why. There we go, another one. Okay. Here again, not a very, not a very strong branch. And a note about the battery usage of these things is that they only seem to have, and mind you, using them just absolutely every day as much as we want to, it seems to have only used about half of the battery life. So these, these being LEDs, they really, really don't use much juice and you don't have to replace the batteries within the holiday season. So that's another really nice feature of these little candles. Now these bows, if you're wondering, you know, I'm not tying them directly to the branch, they have a soft wire hook on the back. And I love soft wire hooks because you can change them a million times and you can continually um, adjust things as you need to and wrap them. It's just a really easy way to um, put things in place and really place things because sometimes, you know, you'll have a hook and you want it to be right next to the branch. Sometimes you want it to drop down and you have that kind of um, freedom to do that and you, you know I like my bows on top of the branch I think it looks more festive so you can see the wire wrap just disappears into the tree and I think it's really like for me a big part of all of this is that it's not perfect yes I'll move things around and try to distribute things and make it look better and better but I don't have any expectation or desire for it to be perfect. This is homemade. This is uh, this is homespun, pure joy. There's nothing fancy. There's not not. This is not something I went and bought at a store fully made up. I didn't have a designer come in and do it for me. So it's it's really to me it's pointless to try to have everything be perfect at Christmas because it's a family holiday and. Part of, part of the joy is what you put into it. And perfection is so, is so sometimes very sterile and very overrated. So, you know, it's not perfect, but it's lovely. And I'm not gonna drive myself crazy making it perfect. I'm gonna move on to other more important things of which there are many. Okay, so here, this is the battery pack to the to the tree topper. I'm not sure if that's going to do the crazy strobe light thing as well. So let's hide this. Oops. 
Oh well. I do yellow label at least. Okay, so we've got that. That and the other ones. Oh, I found one. Nope. Okay. So basically, I decorate in three areas. Now, this is because of the kitten. If I had, if I mean, I love the kitten, so I'd much prefer her. But if it, I didn't have her, I'd have some lovely things on the coffee table, some lovely centerpiece on the dining table. I'd have all kinds of dribs and drabs everywhere. And in a way, it's actually, um, I actually enjoy the limitations of not being able to put all the decorations up because it simplifies it, and one thing I kind of noticed is that, you know, I, I always subscribe to less is more, almost always, and um, when you're more limited, it actually has a better effect in my opinion. So we have the tree, we have a garland over this mirror, and then we have a sideboard with a mirror over it, with a garland over the mirror, and some, a couple things on the table, and that is it. We have a couple pine cones here and there, but that is it, and so, the best thing about that is that it's less to store. When these things come off, they don't take up a lot of space. There's no tree to put. Our outdoor ornaments all collapse down to very, very little. And, um, you know, we live in this mid-century home in the desert. When it was built, it was built only as a weekend or a seasonal home. I mean, this home would have been used four to three, three to four months max. I know that most of its life, it was used a lot less than that. So there's no attic, no basement, no deep storage. So it forces us to um, not collect a lot of clutter. It forces us to not have a bunch of really big ornaments and big artificial trees, and it's okay. I mean, my big, my big sort of um, tagline for the holiday decorations is to make it a gesture, not a statement. So these little holiday gestures really do the trick, and it's and and I also really, really, really believe in the one to ten rule. It is. 10 times more work and more annoying and um, less pleasurable to take down the ornaments than it is to put them up. So the less there is you're putting up, the less there is to put away. I mean, taking all these, it is, you know, you try to make it as fun as possible, but it is very tedious and is not fun coming down. So this is my gesture and let's see, let's put it on the slow flicker. That's my favorite. Oops. One went off. Why'd you do that? Sometimes they just need to be reset a little bit. Sometimes some just don't want to go onto the flicker fl flicker mode. Some of them just want to stay completely. All right. That task is done. What about that one? What about this one? Okay. All right, I think that's it. Okay, so that's it for now, and then we'll move on to our next task.